you know, what sort of vibe you're getting from the Will Turn specifically, and how does it feel after playing two shows here? Is that impacting the sort of set you're able to give? Um, well, I think one of the benefits of playing uh, multiple nights and uh, one venue is you get used to the sound and the acoustics, and um, we're able to sort of gauge uh, what the set list, um, you know, what what songs might work better in, in this type of setting, depending on, uh, you know, the the previous night sound and the audience and all that kind of stuff. And historically, what has been Soundgarden's relationship to Los Angeles? Well, let's see. Um, we played, I guess, our first tour in 1987. We played San Francisco, Los Angeles. Um, San Diego, uh, so we've we've played here a lot from in the early days. We used to play uh, Club Lingerie and The Scream and um, <clears throat> uh, Anti Club, you know, various various places like all around Hollywood and um, Orange County and all that kind of stuff. So, and we also used to be on the SST record label, so we would come down to Lawndale quite a bit and hang out with the SST staff. So we have a long history with LA. How do you feel about the crowds in LA? Is there something special about that? Well, uh, a lot of times there's a lot of industry type crowds here, you know? I mean, there certainly wasn't early days, so they just kind of like fold their arms and like, they don't really emote very much. But I think once we got established as a, as a good live band, we started to get a lot more kind of like just lively, real fans, you know? But, you know, but that's always, uh, that always happens in industry towns like, you know, New York and LA. Sometimes there's, there's kind of the industry attitude, but uh, but it's always been like awesome, you know. And these shows that you've been playing at the World Turn this week, how the crowd been? Crowd's been great. I mean, it's been nice because we uh, we have kind of a standing uh, floor situation down here, and I think that works really good for our band. Um, but uh, people really seem to be enjoying it, so it's been great. And I hear you're the one in charge of the set list. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've been writing the set list for this, this tour, and um, it's been really fun, you know. Uh, we've been trying to learn as many uh, obscure B-sides as we could for this particular tour, so it's been fun to intersperse those um, on different nights. If we're playing consecutive nights, we're trying to mix up uh, songs in the set list as well as the sequence of the set list, so I really enjoy doing that. and I. I I can kind of like gauge what you know, what tempo or what type of groove is going to work in a in the set, you know. So it's it's been really fun, and the guys have been receptive to it. What's the most obscure song you're digging up? Well, uh, there's one called "Blind Dogs" that we're going to attempt tonight. We've never played it live before, so <laughs> fingers crossed. Have you rehearsed it before? We've just rehearsed it twice, yeah. Uh, so hopefully that'll be enough. We were actually curious if you guys still feel a connection with Seattle and the Seattle music scene. Um, well, I guess our, our connection is uh, certainly tied to the music scene that we had in the late 80s and early 90s. Um, just because we were playing more shows locally back then and, and all the musicians and bands that we knew were, it was very tight knit. Uh, but I think our relationship with the Seattle music scene now is, I guess, as sort of, you know, elder statesmen or, you know, kind of one of the more established groups, you know. Um, but we certainly uh, know a lot of new and up and coming groups and, and it's always nice to sort of interact with uh, what's, you know, like the, the newer generation of musicians there now. And there's, there's a lot of really great stuff, like, you know, Macklemore's blowing up and we got Rain Wolf and, uh, Death Cab and Mother's Finest, a lot of really cool bands.